All right, so this is our basic light stand. We've got a few of these at school, um, and then I have several more that I bring in to add to it as we need them. Uh, these have a kind of little tripod base at the bottom. Just open that up, lock down the nut there on the side, and then it's got sections that can extend out to get them up pretty high. This will go up, this is only two two extension levels and it's got one more. So this can get up to the ceiling level. I'm not gonna put it up that high. Let me go ahead and stick a light on there. All right, so we've got a light on there. I'm gonna tighten it up at the level I want. I'm gonna leave it at eye level right here. These, not a, not a lot of our lights have these on them, but these are called barn doors that they open up around the light. Rotate that a little bit so you can see better. And these are just useful for kind of directing the light a little bit. See, it's reflective on the inside here, so it bounces more light around. And then black on the side, so you can kind of, if you want, you can cut down the amount of light you're showing. If you just want to get a little shaft of light on the wall, you can kind of use these to, to create that kind of effect. Go ahead and turn this on. All right, so there we've got a light on a stand. And just to show you how, how those doors can affect the light, you can see it's really reflective there. That really amplifies it if you, if you aim it right. So that's our basic light stand. Okay, the other kind of stand we're going to look at today is called a C-stand or a century stand, but usually they're just called C-stands. They're much bigger, heavier duty, heavier, and this is not a light thing. Um, rather than having the, the fold-out legs, like tripod style, it has these heavy-duty legs that swing out and lock into place. So it gives you a fairly stable base, with one leg being pronounced above the others, much bigger. And we'll get to why in a second. Okay, C-stands usually only have two extension sections, but they're very long. This one just by itself gets all the way to the ceiling. So this could go up to about, probably about 12 feet fully extended. The other nice thing about these is they've got, you know, these heavy duty latch points, but they're also gas, filled at the bottom with the spring. So if you happen to let go and you've still got a light on there, it bounces a little bit. So it won't fall and, and break anything if you let something go. Not that it's okay to let something go, but it's got that level of protection at both levels. Now the top here, this has got a heavy duty pin. You can't screw stuff onto this, but you can add things to it that you can either screw stuff on or, or heavier duty lights are, are designed to go onto this type of pin. This is called a baby pin. Uh, there's various types that Hollywood uses, but this is really the only time you'll, time you'll run into with uh, school level gear. All right, so I've got this stand set all the way up and I've got on it here at the top what's called a grip head. This is the one of those things that I mentioned that you put on here to attach other things to. It just screws onto the top of the pin, the baby pin here, tightens down with this screw on the side, and then it gives you this, this locking mechanism that you can mount other things in. You can It can grip things. So in this case, it's got a pole in it. It's called a grip pole, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, but you can also mount other lighting fixtures in here. It can clamp down and grip things. We'll show that in here in a second. Um, then we'll look at this grip pole. Usually they're about 40 inches long and I've got another grip head on the end here. Grip head. Uh, and it's holding a second light. This is just a tiny little spotlight. Um, so, C-stand, grip head, grip pole, and another grip head. Um, now sometimes I put a different grip pole on here that extends out, telescopes out and I use it for like microphones, but this one here is, is, is heavier duty. It's sturdier than the telescoping one. So this would be good to hang lights off of. You wouldn't worry about bending the pole with, uh, with this solid one. If I put it on the telescoping one, there's a chance it, a light could bend it. All right, so we've got the arm extended out there. 
And that's where the weight is. Nor normally we'd have a heavier light on there. I, I've just got that there for example. But the arm and the, the light on the end create quite a lot of weight. So down at the bottom, we'll see that we've got, first of all, our largest leg is towards the weight. It's directly under the weight. So that's an important thing. You always put the biggest leg towards the weight. And then you throw a sandbag on it. This is a 10 pound sandbag. Um, they make them in different weights. I think all of mine are 10 pound um, just because you can mix and match. But you always put the sandbag on the heaviest leg and you wanna keep it so it's not resting on the ground. See, it's kind of swinging here just a little bit. The weight is not on the ground, it's on the bar. That's the important thing. That's what keeps the sand stable. Okay, so we've got our main light set up over there, but maybe we wanna reflect it around uh, and bounce some light on another surface. So I've got this C-stand right here with a clip on the top and this four foot by four foot styrofoam board. And it's just a white styrofoam board. It's just made from home insulation. So it's pretty cheap. These are like three bucks for eight feet at, at Home Depot. And I clip it on there and then I can use the stand to rotate it or tilt it up and down if I added another clip at the bottom. Then I could bounce light using this setup. Maybe besides bouncing your light off of this card, you've got another light source that you don't want peeking into your scene, like this window back here. Well, in that case, you would use what's called negative fill or just black out the window. So I've got this negative fill card here, and it's, it's actually what's called a floppy because it's got this fabric on it. See, and that blocks out the window. The top part here is rigid. These are two heavy duty pieces of, of black foam. And then just the, the fabric that hangs off of it, it's attacked with Velcro, we can take it off if we need to, but usually we keep them together because you, you, you need to cover more space usually if you're blocking out a light source. So yeah, this is called a negative fill floppy. And we've got it clamped into the grip head up here at the top rather than in a clamp like this. This clamp on the reflector isn't quite strong enough to hold all this fabric. The fabric's a little heavy. This styrofoam is really light. This foam by itself is pretty light too. If we took off the fabric, it would work in just a small clamp. But for this, we're using the heavy duty grip head. So another option that we have for both bounce light and negative fill and diffusion is this thing called a five-way reflector, five-way pop-out reflector basically like uh, you know those windshield reflectors to protect your interior but a lot bigger all right so you see on one side this thing is just white makes a good reflector this is super light I could clamp it into the grip head or this clamp over here if need be or you could just have somebody hold it um, they're just super lightweight you can even flex them a little bit to, to direct the light a little bit more um, the problem with them, they catch in the wind, but if, if you do have to use them in the wind, having a person hold it is better than putting it in a stand because stands likelier to tip over. Now, these are called a five-way reflector because you got the white on one side. If we flip it around, gold, and as you can see, it's super shiny. And gold, when you reflect gold light, kind of gives a very warm look to the subject. Let's see if I can hit myself with it here. Yeah, you see kind of the side of my face kind of gets yellow. You, you might use it to simulate like a sunset type of look. Whereas the white is just going to be a much more neutral bounce. See, that's, you know, it doesn't have that yellow tone in there. But it's called a five-way reflector. That's two. It's not, not all five ways are reflection. But if you unzip it, this whole thing comes off. I'm not going to take it off, but just to show you. The whole thing comes off. On one side, it's silver. So then you get that brighter look that the gold gives you, but without the yellow tone. It keeps the, the whiter balance, color balance of the white side, but intensifies using the silver, as you can see there. And on the other, 
it's black. So you can create more negative fill if you need to block out more light or create more shadows in your scene. And then if you take the thing entirely off, it leaves you with this central disc, which is translucent and can be used for diffusion or a, a, a less powerful reflector. So five ways, five ways you can use it. It's a very, very handy little tool. Okay, so that's the basics on light stands, C stands, reflectors, and negative fill. Tomorrow, we're going to move on to microphones.